Last time, we sprung a Klingon diplomat from Ruripentle, after the Warden, a member of House Torg, took money to keep him imprisoned. This man, Kumtar, or Alexander, son of Worf, had uncovered a plot that a rival house was going to make a move against the interests of the Empire, and had been imprisoned before he could act on it. Starfleet Section 31 orchestrated a pursuit to have him broken out by us, and now we are considering if we should follow this man's information, providing he is not lying. During my time as ambassador, I uncovered evidence that one of the great houses has been corrupted by a foreign influence and is plotting against the Empire. I was thrown into Urapenthe as punishment for digging too close to the truth. The fugitive Drake suggested that we travel to the Vor system. We hope to find evidence that will prove there is an internal threat to the Empire. In the meantime, perhaps it's best to consider the history of this Kumta, son of Wolf, or Alexander Rozhenko as he was born. In 2374, Alexander enlisted in the Klingon Defence Force as he was assigned to the Rotaran, Martok's own vessel during the Dominion War. However, his years of living among humans had caused him to miss out on a lot of Klingon culture and his combat training was equally lacking. When Worf joined the House of Martok, so too did Alexander, and he transferred to the IKS Yakfang a year later. By 2394, he had married Ba'en, and had a son of his own, Devak, who himself operates as a member of the Honor Guard, and will later go on to be a commander in the Omega Task Force, a Starfleet KDF joint task force against the Borg. Canonically, the task force is yet to have formed yet, that's still a couple of weeks away. Meanwhile, at this time, Alexander was trying to keep the peace between the UFP and the Empire during the Gorn attacks, but repeated conferences failed. As war seemed ever more inevitable, Alexander resigned as a diplomat and headed to Borath for personal reasons. In 2397, he moved to Earth, uh, before the outbreak of the war, and set up a home there for a time. However, after the eruption of the Federation Klingon War in 2405, he vanished once again. Clearly, he'd returned to the Empire and taken up the role as an ambassador, but perhaps wary of corruption, well, he spends the next few years trying to uproot it, leading to his current predicament. Captain, we've entered the Vor system. There's a starbase in orbit dead ahead. Huh. It's one of ours, but the record's listed as a research facility operated by Eridian scientists. Eridians? Most of their work centers around information and the trade of goods. Scientists? That's unusual. The Eridians are not known for their scientific prowess, but the research station is listed as a protected asset. According to your ship's computer, the Eridians have a trade agreement with a human scientist named Amar Singh. He is working with someone in the Empire on a genetic research project. It's unclear what Drake expected us to find here. Then we turn over every stone until we find something. So, more lore. Amar Singh is one of several characters who have faded into the numerous revisions of the STO storyline. While he can be encountered in the Mission Facility 4028, or episode 69 of my Stoss playthrough, nice. he ended up there by trying to combine Klingon and Gorn DNA to create a super species. He is also a human augment himself and a descendant of Khan Noonien Singh, or at least he claims to be. This outpost may be related to that project in some way, but I suspect it serves another purpose too, one not on the books. This research outpost is clearly a Klingon one. Its operations centre resembles the bridge module of a bird of prey. It even has the indent just above the circumference that houses the primary deflector array. We can see it's got numerous panels, probably solar or some other energy collectors, and at the rear it has a subspace communications array. So that part adds up. Let's see if it is crewed by Iridians. This is research facility Logner Beta 3. I am Plardos Yarden, commander of the station. With whom am I speaking? Lieutenant Roka Conrelaw of the IKS Koskari. I trust you're ready to receive us. Uh, we weren't informed there would be visitors today. How may we serve the Empire? Uh, 
Plados Yardin, was it? Make a note of that. We're here to conduct an inspection. Commander Plardos, you will provide this ship's computer access to all recent station communication logs. You will also transmit a manifest of shipments and supply delivery receipts for the last month. Yeah, that'll do for starters. And please be thorough, otherwise we'll have to beam over and take them ourselves. You don't want that. Uh, um, well, this is unexpected. You do realize that we have an agreement with your government and Dr. Singh. Our research is highly classified. You do have some sort of official order granting permission to view these records? <sighs> of course I have permission and orders to be here. Here, let me show you. Also, I love how the green text prompts us to display our high yield reason. Do you think they got it? Reception can be a bit spotty. Why are you attacking us? Oh, yeah, Please, they got it. We are not your enemy. Did you just assume my enemies? Send over the information the ambassador requested. Also, sorry about the secondary explosion. You're completely mad. This is a top security installation. You don't have authorization to access our records. We're filing a formal complaint. Sorry, the manager's not in at the moment. You're hiding something. Of course we're hiding something. We're conducting classified research. That's why you are not authorized to access station records. You do understand the concept of top secret, don't you? You really want to test me? This is preposterous. We refuse to hand over top secret information without proper authorization. We will defend ourselves, if necessary. Well, I commend him for doing his job. They've powered up defensive cannons and launched small craft. And the defensive shuttles pose next to no threat to us, and we take them out very quickly before firing on the station itself to neutralize its single defensive turret. The station commander sent a distress signal. A ship is responding. Captain, Romulan warbird on sensors. So, they managed to sneak out a distress call. We cloak immediately to analyse the situation. Captain, the Romulans are hailing us. We can see that the vessel that has arrived is a Mogai warbird, a patrol vessel of the Romulan Star Empire. However, I wonder who we're dealing with today. Rumour has it that the Star Empire is losing control of its citizens and rebellion is afoot. This vessel identifies as an IRW, which means it's allied with the original Star Empire under Empress Sela. Put them on screen. We received a distress call from this station. We are here to provide assistance. Well, they shouldn't be able to spot us if we reply. Your assistance is no longer needed. You may go. Station Commander Plardos sounded distressed. He mentioned a disagreement with a Klingon vessel. It would be dishonourable of us not to investigate. This is an internal Klingon matter. You can leave. We appreciate the delicate nature of the situation. Would you mind if we spoke with the station? Perhaps we could resolve any misunderstanding. By all means, chat away. It's not like the Romulan military to offer up aid like this. I find this very suspicious. Why would Romulans respond to a distress call here? Agreed. So let's eavesdrop on their communications then. The Romulans hailed the station on an open frequency, and then immediately switched to an encrypted channel. Hmm. The Romulan ship hasn't raised shields. What are they up to? I want eyes on everything in this system. Let me know if anything changes. I don't need to remind you that we're in Klingon territory. The fact that these Romulans are here at all could be the clue we need. Yes, it is strange, but Drake said we could find answers here, not clues, and I want this wrapped up. Captain, the station has transported several crates of goods to the Romulans. Those sound like answers to me. Commander Plados has explained the situation. It sounds as if there's been a miscommunication. There is. It's happening now. It's called lying. Give me that contraband you just received. 
the foolish bravado of the Klingon Empire. Attacking your own station and then accusing us of wrongdoing. I should have expected something like this. Very well. We'll communicate in terms you can understand. You do that, and we'll play a game that you can understand called Hide and Seek. We circle around the unaware Mogai Warbird until we're right behind it, facing its least armoured spot. The Warbird pulls away after taking a barrage from us, but we cling to the stern after we prize a hole opening into its shields. Unfortunately, our zeal comes at a bit of a price, and it's too late. We destroy the Warbird with whatever it had on it, collapsing into the unregulated singularity core. More Romulan ships dropping out of war! And we can't cloak, they've seen us. Interesting. One of the Romulans is firing on the other. The other Romulan ship could belong to those rebels we've been hearing about. This is Commander Telek of the Romulan Republic. We are here to cooperate with the Klingon Empire. I, uh, the Republic? Wait, are those rebels? Whatever the case, that's an Imperial Star de de Deradex, and we could use all the help we can destroying it. Fortunately, this vessel does not attempt to use its infamous tractor lock trick on us, and we, with the assistance of the smaller Dalen Warbird, manage to sink it. Romulan Republic is thankful for your assistance. We had tracked the Tall Shi'ar to this system, but we would have been outmatched without your aid. You fight well for a Romulan, and it's a tough little ship you've got there. The Romulan Republic faces many challenges, but conflict with the Klingon Empire should not be one of them. As a gesture of good faith, I'll share with you information that you might find to be of value. Interesting. We believe Tall Shi'ar agents are collaborating with operatives in the Klingon Empire to steal weaponry and technology. We have uncovered large supplies of Klingon weapons on the planet Nimbus III that we believe are being stockpiled there by agents of the Empress. The stolen goods are being transferred through several facilities in the local sector, including this science station. In the Stoss side quest missions, we uncovered a Tal Shi'ar base on Nimbus III. But it seems these Eurydians were supplying the Tao Shah with Klingon tech. The shipping manifests on the supply crates and the weapons themselves. By tracking the flow of goods, we've learned that there are agents in the Klingon Empire transferring stolen supplies to the Tal Shiar. Those supplies are being stockpiled on Nimbus 3. If you will help track down the source of those weapons, we will share our data with you. Ever their Klingon mistrusting of the Romulans, we demand that they send us the data and make no promises of future cooperation. Transferring the data now. We expect the Klingon Empire to track down the source of these stolen goods and punish those responsible before more weapons fall into the wrong hands. If we discover any further information, we will notify the Empire's ambassador on Mol Rihan. Well. Thank you, Commander Tanik. It seems the Republic is on its way to earning its place. Now, get me that worm, Clados. Please listen to me. We were only following protocol. We must ensure that our research doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Then why were you shipping stolen goods to the Tal Shiar? We, we didn't know the shipments we were transferring were stolen. I, I was told that the crates were medical supplies needed on the war front. We didn't ask questions. Please, show mercy. We were only doing what we were ordered to do. Ordered by who? You know, I've had enough of you. Just send me the data we asked for originally and we'll look ourselves. Due to present circumstances, we will forego normal security authorization and provide the files you have requested. We live to serve the Empire. Yeah, just make it clear you're serving the right Empire. The files. Now. We've received the data that Kemtar requested, Captain. It will take some time to analyze these files and track the source of the shipments. In the meantime, we are prepared to leave the system on your command. 
I have half a mind to blow this blooming station apart. Even if they were unaware that they were transmitting weapons, they were still supplying the Tal Shiar. You can't exactly mistake a Romulan warbird for a Klingon now, can you? As for this Romulan Republic business, I don't think it will go anywhere. But apparently our Empire has an ambassador on their homeworld, so okay then. They're a legitimate power, apparently. After making our way lazily past the station, we leave the system to review the data. Your officers have analyzed the shipping logs from the research facility. Their findings confirm what the Romulan Republic officer told us. Someone has been routing technology and weapons to the Tal Shiar, and they are going to great lengths to cover their tracks. Mm. I was hoping it was just a skirmish between houses, but now they're getting the Romulans involved. Do you suspect any great house? An operation of this magnitude would require the resources of one of the houses, but the shipments are being routed in such a way to conceal their point of origin. Our evidence is circumstantial. <sighs> it was my eagerness to point fingers without proof that landed me in Urapenthe in the first place. We must exercise patience and wait for our prey to reveal themselves. You learn from your mistakes. Good. Is it worth talking to your father, Worf? My father is Ambassador Worf. He has many friends and many enemies. I tried to convince him that one of the houses was moving in the shadows against us. He either didn't believe me or didn't care. Either way, he made his decision when he refused to act after I was sent to Urapinthe. His pride is a weakness our enemy will try to exploit. Wolf? Too proud? Nah. No. If you cannot get through to him, then perhaps a stranger might. You can try, but we must be prepared if he doesn't. We should at least warn him of the danger, even if he refuses to see the knife at his throat. Don't worry. If anyone pulls a blade, we'll be there to intercept it. So, my gut tells me House Torg is involved, but that may just be because of our experiences with the Warden. After all, one dishonourable act means nothing to a house as large and currently well respected as Torg. Plus, they are closely allied with Jumpok. And even if my hunch is correct, well then we have nothing that ties them directly to the Tao Shiar and theft of goods. And if we move too early, like Alexander did, then it gives our opponent time to remove us as they did Kumtar. And loath to admit it as I am, well, we are but one crew on a second-hand Borel. Few would notice if we vanished during the midst of the Federation Klingon War. We arrive at Kronos with the intent to locate and speak with Ambassador Worf, Gintak, to House Martok. From what Kimtar has said to us <coughs> off-screen, his relationship with his father has always been rocky, with Worf almost being ashamed of him at one point, at least from Kimtar's point of view. Although they managed to repair much of their relationship, well, it's likely that Worf sees Kimtar's actions as fear-mongering, in the midst of a struggle that should demand the full attention of every warrior. Worf can be found enjoying the night air outside the Great Hall, ready to talk with any officer looking for advice. So he's easily approachable, which is concerning if he is an assassination target. Do you have a minute? Perhaps. First, tell me who you are. Roka Conrelor of the IKS Koskari. Greetings. How may I assist you? Well, that's the thing. I'm actually looking to help you. Um, could we speak somewhere more private? That is an odd request. We stand in the courtyard of the Great Hall, and honor has no need of secrecy. If you cannot speak your mind in this place, then I have no desire to hear what you have to say. I actually agree with you, like 110%, which is why I need to speak to you privately, and it concerns Kimtar, your son. That is not my son's name. If Kimtar wishes to talk, tell him to come and speak to me. I will not communicate through intermediaries. Well, that's the thing. He's a fugitive uh, from Repenthe, and he says you and he are in great danger. He is the only one in danger. Unless you have been foolish enough to listen to his tales. But you have already made that mistake. If you have spoken to him, then you have been to Ruripenthe. Yes, and I can see from the outset it does look like my actions have been a little unorthodox of late, but I can explain everything. There is a great house involved. 
and they're trying to kill you. I am Gintok to the House of Martok. Lady Sorella has declared vengeance on the House of Jimpok. It would not surprise me if all the great houses wish me dead. Tell my son that I am capable of defending myself. It involves the Romulans and the Tal Shiar and stolen goods. Romulans? That does not make sense. Jim Pock's position towards the Federation and the Tal Shiar is very clear. And in this, he has my house's full support. It would be foolish for any house to make such a connection. However, I would not be surprised to hear you mention the house of Duras. Oh, I don't know about Duras. I suspected House Torg, which did absorb Duras, but we don't know. And that is exactly the sort of accusation that landed my son in a penal colony. Tell Kemtar that unless he has proof, he should stay silent. If he is a fugitive from Rurapente, he will only make his situation worse. I do not want to know any more about what you two are plotting. So that's that then. I guess I'll tell him. Has Worf agreed to speak to us? Uh, give me a sec. Um, he says that your name's not Kimtar. What name I use is not important. Did you tell him what we've learned? Yes, he did not seem very concerned. Did you tell him the Romulans are involved? I told him the Romulans were involved alongside the Tal Shiar. Given their history, I've considered the possibility that the House of Duras might be involved. Is he at least willing to review our evidence? Nope. Yai Cha! He is a stubborn old man and he is going to get himself killed! Look, look, look. If we can't talk to Worf, we go to House Martok. Agreed. If the Jin talk to House Martok will not listen, we will take our concerns to the house itself. Martok's son Drex is off-world. I will contact Lady Sorella and arrange a meeting. Don't be discouraged. We'll save him. And the Empire too. These events are very disturbing. They paint a picture of a large conspiracy against prominent houses of the Empire. I will work with my contacts to see what else I can learn. And I will notify you when I have enough leads to further our investigation. So, with that we have uncovered a thread in the weeds, one that leads to the Tal Shiar. But now we need to follow it back to see who is tied to the other end, hopefully not tugging hard enough to alert them. Worf will not act, not without solid evidence, and he's doubtful of his son's motivations it seems, but it might go deeper than that because he did close off the minute he heard Kimtar's name. Clearly there's still some bad blood here. In the meantime, we need to carefully see what else we can uncover to see which of the houses are involved, while well, either we or Kimtar manage to secure an audience with Lady Sorella of House Martok, the former Chancellor's widow. Getting an audience with her, let alone one clandestinely, will take some time. So, until then, thank you for watching the Star Trek Online story series as we continue to explore the ever-changing narrative and additional lore to the series. I've been Rick, and I hope to see you for the next part. Thanks again, and kupla.